Okay, so a little more with mins and maxes uh, graphically. So in this video, we're going to do two tricky examples. Uh, they're not really too bad as long as you remember the uh, little details of the definitions um, for local mins and local maxes and all that stuff. Uh, but you know, at, at first they are kind of tricky because they're not really what you might expect intuitively. Um, but anyway, they're not really difficult, so let's go ahead and see. So let's say we have this function here. Um, let's call it y equals f of x. And it's just the straight line segment from negative 3, 1 over to 4, 1. All right, so where are the local mins and where are the local maxes? Well, actually, so this is why this is kind of tricky or maybe at the very least goofy. Um, but, you know, what we have is a local min at all x in uh, the interval local min at all x in the interval uh, the open interval actually from negative 3 to 4 so at every value of x larger than negative 3 and less than 4 we have a local min so why is that? well because for every value of x in this interval here um, so let's say we pick this x over here we can put a little tiny open interval i around it uh, and we can bring this up here Okay. So let's say here, this is uh, x equals 1, for example, just for example. Um, let's zoom in on that, I guess. So here's x equals 1, uh, and we can put this open interval i around it, and we see that f of 1 is actually uh, less than or equal to all the f uh, or all the y coordinates around it, right? So um, they're actually, they're all equal to each other, but it, they satisfy the definition, um, kind of almost trivially, I guess, because they're all equal. But it does satisfy the definition of a local min. So here, f of 1 is less than or equal to uh, f of x for all the other x values in this interval i. Um, but actually, because they're all equal to, uh, they also satisfy the definition for a local max, right? So also, uh, f of 1 is greater than or equal to, and actually equal to, so greater than or equal to um, f of x for all the other x values in this little interval i. So... Uh, you know, the formal definition for local min and local max actually is satisfied here. Um, so we do see that, uh, let's zoom back out, and we do see that uh, we have a local min at all the x in this interval, and we also have a local max, local max at uh, all x in the same interval, uh, in negative 3 to 4. Okay, so in the same interval from negative 3 to 4, um, so remember, that just means negative 3 is less than x is less than 4. That's what that means. Um, in this interval here, uh, we have local mins and local maxes, uh, both of those, at all the values of x. All right, so why not at the endpoints? Well, we already talked about it briefly in the last couple of videos. But uh, anyway, you know, if you're at an endpoint, remember, you can't put an interval around one of the endpoints, right? So if you try to do that, you know, you could bring it up to the function here. But over here, uh, the function is not defined to the right of x equals 4. Okay, so there's nowhere for this interval to go, so this interval is not going to work. So uh, at x equals 4, we can't satisfy the definition of a local min or local max because we can't find any open interval to put around x equals 4, right? But for any number less than 4, you could find an open interval. Uh, it might have to be really super teeny tiny, but the point is for any number less than 4, any number at all less than 4, uh, you can find an open interval around it that's going to stay inside of this function here, all right? So... Um, you know, no matter how close you are to the number 4, you could always get just a little bit closer, right? So, in other words, there is no number just, there is no real number just before 4, right? So if you talk about integers, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., you know, the number before 4 is 3, the number after 4 is 5. But for real numbers, you know, if you talk about numbers on the entire line, uh, not just integers, then there is no previous number and there's no next number. So that's kind of an interesting and strange, well, maybe not strange, but... Uh, kind of interesting and, you know, pretty useful property of the real numbers. Um, you know, there is no next number and there is no previous number. Okay, for any uh, two numbers that you pick, you can always find one in between them, basically. So no matter how close you are to 4, you can always get a little bit closer. So you always have room to make a little tiny open interval around any x value that you pick. So that's why um, for any x less than 4 and also greater than negative 3, um, you could always put a little tiny open interval around those numbers. Um, so the definition for local min and local max can be satisfied, but not at the endpoints, because if you're directly at 4, then any open interval you put on uh, or around 4 is going to, you know, shoot off or be off, uh, off the function here. 
So, because um, the function is not defined to the right of four, and any open interval around four is gonna have to go to the right, so there's nowhere to go on the function, basically. Um, but, so that's just for local mins and maxes, right? But uh, global mins and global maxes are okay. So actually, this function uh, does have a global min, so, or an absolute. So there's an absolute min at all x uh, in the entire interval from negative 3 to 4. Okay, so remember, this means negative 3 less than or equal to x, uh, less than or equal to 4, right? That's what that means. Um, so we have an absolute min at all these points, right? Because here, uh, for any x in negative 3 to 4, f of x is less than or equal to, um, or let's, let's say like this, sorry. So if any c that we pick here, if we pick c to be negative 3 or negative 4 anywhere else in here, uh, f of c is going to be less than or equal to f of x for all other x in the interval, right? So, um, you know, it's because this is a constant function, it's just a piece of a straight horizontal line, uh, it's pretty trivial. But it is kind of tricky a little bit for that same reason, so we want to be careful with that. Um, so, you know, an absolute min, uh, we have an absolute min at all the x in this interval. So absolute mins and absolute maxes can happen at the endpoints, but local mins and local maxes can never happen at endpoints because you can't put a little tiny interval around uh, the endpoints there. Um, so likewise, uh, an absolute max, or we have uh, absolute maxes at all x in that same interval, closed interval from negative 3 to 4. Okay, so um, at every value of x we have an absolute min, at every value of x we have an absolute max, but uh, we only have a local min and a local max at all the values of x except for the endpoints, right? So that's kind of what makes this a little bit tricky is, you know, you just have to be careful with the definitions. Um, and remember that the definitions of local min, local max, absolute min, absolute max, they're not strict inequalities, right? The inequalities are not strict. So for, you know, flat, horizontal, constant functions like this, uh, it's okay. So it's kind of strange and uh, maybe not very uh, practical, but it is just something that's uh, interesting enough that's uh, worth mentioning. So that's example three. Let's uh, see example four then. So let's um, get rid of some of this here. We'll get rid of this interval, get rid of that interval. Get rid of that. All right, so let's um, rebuild this here. So example four is actually gonna be pretty similar to example three. Uh, there's only gonna be a small difference here, but it does change things uh, a little more than you might expect at first. So, all right, same thing here. Um, now, this is example four. All right, so we have the same function here, but now let's put a new piece up here. So it's going to keep going infinitely far that way, um, and then we'll put a new piece down here, infinitely far this way. All right, so what's happening now? Let's talk about global first, because global is easier to analyze. Uh, so globally speaking, uh, there's no absolute min, and there's no absolute max anymore, right? So here, the function keeps shooting off down all the way, it just infinitely far down this way. So no matter how uh, small or no matter how far down you go on the function, you could always go down a little farther. Okay, so no matter how small of a y value you have, you can always find a smaller one. So there's no absolute min anymore. Uh, and likewise, for this function, up, uh, for the same function here, um, you can just go infinitely far this way. So no matter how large of a y value you find, you can always find a larger one if you just keep going up this way. So there's also no absolute max, right? So just by adding these little two pieces here, um, you know, we've changed it so that there's no absolute min and there's no absolute max. So this function has uh, no absolute extrema. Um, so remember that word from a couple of videos ago, extrema. It means min or max. So um, and what about local min, local max? Well, this is actually still true, but we could say a little more. Um, now, because the function is defined for all real numbers and not just on this interval from negative 3 to uh, 4, then uh, we can actually find local mins and local maxes at the endpoints. So, um, now what happens at this endpoint here? Well, let's put a little tiny interval uh, around negative 3. So we can do that now because we have this piece, but remember in example 3, uh, we didn't have this piece over here, okay? This piece is gone, so we couldn't put an open interval around negative 3. But now we can. So what do we, let's zoom in a bit then. So what do we see if we have our little open interval i? So here's our interval i, and if we bring it up to the function, what do we see? We see that f of negative 3 uh, don't really have much room here. So f of negative 3 is actually greater than or equal to f of x uh, for all x in i, right? 
So if we pick any x value in here, it's gonna to correspond to some y value somewhere over here, and we see that f of negative three uh, is greater than or equal to um, f of x for any other x in here. So actually, uh, now we do have a local max at negative three, right? So we have a local max still at all these other values, but now we have one at negative three. So a local max at all x in this interval. Now we include negative three, right? Include negative three. So that means, uh, remember this in interval notation, that means this. So negative three less than or equal to x less than four. So now we have this going on. Um, now what happens at four? So at four, uh, let's put a tiny little open interval around that. So we'll get rid of this i. Um, so this is our new i. Okay, that's our new i. Let's also get rid of this. So here at uh, x equals four, we put a little tiny open interval i around it. So that's going to go up to the function here and here. So now, uh, again, we can do this now because we have this piece here, right? But in example three, uh, we didn't have this piece. It, the function just stopped at four. So we couldn't put an open interval around four. But now we have this uh, extra piece, so we can do that. And any x value in this interval i is going to correspond to somewhere on the function over here, right? Some y value up here. And we can see uh, pretty clearly that f of four is actually less than or equal to f of x. Uh, for all x in i, right? So any value of x that we pick in here, uh, what's going to happen is that f of 4 is less than or equal to f of x for any other uh, any value of x that we pick, right? So if we pick a value of x over here, f of 4 is actually equal to uh, f of x for any value we pick over here. And if we pick a value of x up here, then f of 4 is going to be strictly less than f of x. Um, so in any case, this inequality is satisfied. Okay, f of 4 is less than or equal to f of x for all x in that interval. So that means uh, we have a local min at x equals 4. All right, so, um, and we still have local mins at this entire, you know, on this entire horizontal piece here, greater than negative 3 and less than 4. So uh, let's zoom back out just a bit. So this is still true, local min at all x in the interval negative 3 to 4, but now we can include 4, right? So by adding this piece up here, we can include four now. So we have a local min at all those same uh, places as before, but now we also have one at x equals four because we added this new piece here. Um, all right, so those are two kind of tricky examples. Not really too bad if you think about them a little bit. You just have to remember the details of the definitions. So um, we'll see a couple more kind of tricky ones in the next video, and then we'll start talking about critical points after that.